China has thousands of missiles and feels confident it could knock out Taiwan in a surprise attack during the battle. Can Taiwan be defeated instantly if attacked by China? After weeks of hesitation, on July 15, 2020, the administration of United States. President Donald Trump told the U.S. Congress they would allow the sale of 66 new F-16B warplanes produced to Taiwan for U.S. $8 billion. The move will clearly infuriate China, which regards Taiwan as a rebel province. Although the agreement has not yet been resolved technically, Taiwan will almost certainly approve the rare opportunity to purchase new fighter jets to strengthen the old fighter fleet. Theoretically, the Taiwan Air Force can be deployed to face nearly four or five times the number of Chinese warplanes if the country uses military force to attack Taiwan Island. However, for Taiwan fighter jets which are not numerous to have any impact at all, they must first take off successfully, which could be impossible because of the 1,300 ballistic missiles and hundreds of air, sea and land cruise missiles launched by the Chinese People's Liberation Army PLA, can be deployed at once against the island. Taiwan is very unfortunate located very close to a country that has invested heavily in a broader range of capabilities that would make it difficult for Taiwan to fly warplanes into combat. Taiwanese vessels in ports, important radars and communication facilities, to vital fuel and weapons warehouses are also vulnerable targets of Chinese attacks. Taiwan has a multi-layered air defense system that can be used to prevent various forms of attack. The upper and middle level systems are operated by the Taiwan Air Force, while the lower level systems are deployed by the Army. The upper layer is composed of about 6 Tian Kung 2 and 3 Sky Bo missile batteries, the latter with a range of 199.5 km and the ability to travel up to 7 times the speed of sound. Chongshan radar on a separate truck will signal the missile inertia guidance system towards the target. In the terminal phase, the active radar locator in the nose will guide the missile towards its target. Furthermore, with a range of 32.18 km, seven Taiwan Patriot missile launcher batteries appeared with about 400 MSE Pac-3 missiles. Sky Bow and Pac-3 are the only Taiwan system capable of intercepting ballistic missiles. As such, they can also be said to be priority targets in the Chinese attack. Therefore, they are in turn protected by a layer of medium-range weapons, including 1948M Long MIM-23 Hawk radar-guided missile batteries and radar-equipped Skyguard GDF-6 batteries, which combine Sparrow medium-range missiles and 35mm cannon short distances that can launch bullets that explode in the air and are full of tungsten shards. Short Range Air Defense Systems SHORADS, which can be effective against low-flying aircraft, unmanned aircraft and cruise missiles subsequently form the lower layer of Taiwan's air defense. They include more than 4,000 US-made FIM-92 Stinger missiles for defense of certain points, which are loaded into portable launchers, deployed on fixed tripod mounts, and on 74 Avenger Humvee military vehicles. Taiwan has also adopted the Tianqian-1 Sky Sword air-to-air -air missile variant launched from land, originating from the United States Sidewinder. The TC-1L variant has a range of 8.8 km and a maximum speed of Mach 2. The four missiles can be mounted on Taiwan's Antelope air defense vehicle, which also carries their own MPQ-78 Doppler pulse radar to help the missile find heat toward the target. Taiwan also still uses the U.S.-built Chaparral missile system which is armed with Sidewinder missiles. Although the defense looks formidable, Taiwan does not have enough defense systems to win in the long-term direct BATTL with the Chinese People's Liberation Army. This is not surprising, considering that mainland China has 58 times the population of Taiwan. Even in a qualitative aspect, the military balance looks bleak for Taiwan when the Chinese People's Liberation Army gets modern fourth and fifth generation warplanes. Grand Corporation's research found that outnumbered Taiwan fighter jets all suffered greater losses than the attacks they caused in air combat simulations, except for modernized F-16s.
The study also explains the step-by-step -step approach that the Chinese People's Liberation Army might use to dismantle Taiwan's air defenses. The first stage is a large series of missiles designed to weaken air defenses, aimed at bringing down air defense radars estimated to require between 124 and 370 missiles. Once the radar is paralyzed, the long and medium range surface to air missile batteries will in turn be defeated in the second wave of attack. Their long range air defense missiles are no longer counted. Chinese People's Liberation Army aircraft can fly over Taiwan at altitude and launch precision guided ammunition without putting themselves at risk. The third phase will focus on destroying enemy runways. The study estimates that between 41 to 155 missiles can fulfill that goal, depending on the precision of the attack. With runways that cannot be used, various Taiwan fighter planes will find it difficult to take off and then be shot methodically with aerial bombardments. The Taiwan Air Force has indeed benefited from reinforced underground air bases built on the side of mountains in Hualien and Taidung. They may be enough to protect the aircraft but can remain hidden if the runway is not functioning. Taiwan fighter jets can also use the highway instead of an airstrip, but the operating tempo using such alternative plans will be sporadic. The RAND Corporation study recommends that Taiwan divert spending from manned warplanes to the deployment of 21 to over 40 air platoon equipped with medium-range AIM-120 Sidewinders short-range missiles and radar vehicles. They can provide more compact and easy-to-move coverage for the island of Taiwan to avoid retaliatory attacks. More broadly, the study's authors argue, Taiwan's air defenses must fight the Chinese People's Liberation Army asymmetrically by prioritizing the survival of the most capable systems rather than trying to intercept every attacking missile and aircraft. One strategy is to hide Taiwan's long-range surface-to-air missiles underground so it is difficult for the Chinese People's Liberation Army to find and destroy them. That would force the Chinese People's Liberation Army to slow down the tempo of operations and continue to use expensive and limited long-range missile supplies, bearing in mind that the threat of surface-to-air missiles might reappear as they lower their vigilance. A different approach is for Taiwan to store its surface-to-air missiles and reserve them to fight the air superiority of the Chinese People's Liberation Army for a limited time, perhaps in critical sea or land battles. At present, Taiwan is acquiring additional short-range air defense systems and enhancing the air defense capabilities of its warships.